It appeared from nowhere. In the middle of the street, a humanoid shadow. This entity had no eyes. All street lamps down the road turned off. Quickly, frost began to consume everything in sight. The windows, the doors, the walls, growing faster and faster until I couldn't see anything from the outside anymore. And I only had five days of food and water. Hungry, cold, thirsty. I wasn't even moving anymore. I couldn't find the strength or the will to do so. Offering me the last gift this level could ever give me. A painless death. Here goes nothing, I said. I kicked the door, but it was frozen shut. My boot was leaking blood. Make sure to keep watching till the end to find out whether he survives this level of the back rooms. Am I finally outside? Is this it? I've been through some serious shit in the back rooms. Made it out of level 2 and level 6. I finally ended in level 11, where I spent quite a lot of time because I didn't want to play with my life at diving into obscure and unknown levels that would probably mean the end of me in a matter of seconds. And honestly, I kinda got used to the facelings being passive and acting like cogs of a broken society. That was until last night when I went to find a quiet and clean place to sleep. I quickly found a room that was odd. I mean, everything down there is odd as hell, but this one was odder. If I may, the room was filled to the brim of air conditioners. They were all working and buzzing at a certain tone that might trigger PTSD for quite a lot of those poor souls I spent days or even weeks in level zero. The temperature in the room was very cold, but it suited me well, as I always brought with me a winter coat, just in case. Yes, I know, it was a complete burden in earlier levels. But hey, if I had to face an entity, I would just throw it on him. So yeah, this room was great to spend the night in. For a moment, it almost let my mind that I was in the back rooms. Most people would have become an insanity for all the time I've spent in the back rooms. But I'm tough. At least, that's what I thought. The first thing that woke me was the freezing air on my face. I mean, come on, I love the cold, but this was too much. I opened my eyes and the only thing I saw was a street lamp, a few meters away, lighting up the thin and gentle snow that was falling down. I was in the middle of a road, covered in the same snow. On my left, what seemed to be a forest, and on my right, a big alpine house, made out of rock and wood, like a typical one would be. At first, I thought I was outside, outside of the back rooms of course. I slowly walked my way up the road to see if I could find any kind of people living there and asked a simple question, where am I? Then I noticed it, the temperature was going down. I mean, it was already a solid 25 degrees out there, but the more I walked, the colder it got. It came to a point where I couldn't feel my legs anymore. Suddenly, I noticed something else that came with the freezing temperature, the absence of light. I was out of the light emitted by the street lamp. It can't possibly be linked, I thought to myself, as I gathered all the energy I had left in my frozen legs to make my way back to the street lamp. It got warmer and warmer until I was directly under the light bulb, and it almost felt like a hot summer day for a second. Don't ask me how it even works, but these street lights are incredibly efficient heat sources. All I could do was wonder, what was the true temperature of this place? This impossible question almost froze my brain in place, and at that time, a realization hit me. I was still in the back rooms. This was just another level, another stupid level that was probably an infinitely repeating pattern of the same thing. But this time, you can die if you step out of the light. Gosh, I hate this place even more now. I decided to walk downhill, following the line of street lamps as much as I possibly could. And to no surprise, the temperature roughly stayed the same, while still getting a bit colder in the less lit parts. It took me quite a while before I stopped and had the thought of entering a house. If I was truly in a level of the back rooms, then it would most certainly be empty, and I wouldn't be in the awkward scene of breaking into the house of a family and scaring the crap out of them. No lights from the windows, no cars, nothing that could possibly indicate any sort of human presence other than the house itself. I hope the back rooms police doesn't find out. I chuckled to myself before giving an enormous kick at the wooden door, which slammed open on the first try. These things didn't even have locks to begin with. What a waste of energy. It was cold inside here too. Not as cold as earlier, but still rather cold compared to the zone lit by the street lamps. As I stepped inside, I remembered that there were actual entities in the back rooms and this level was most likely no exception to that rule. I was unarmed. Well, I still had my coat, but I'd rather die from an entity than to throw away the only thing that separated my human skin from the inhumane frost. The house was empty, no furniture, no outlet, no lamps, nothing. Not even almond water. And gosh, 
I never thought I could miss almond water. I went back outside, slightly pissed, but there was another house next to the one I just broke into, and this one wasn't empty. I could see furniture from the windows. There were a few chairs and a table, probably made in massive alpine wood. There was old carpet on the ground, but I'll stop you right there. It wasn't moist, nor yellowish, a gift from the backroom's gods. Making my way deeper into the house, I even stumbled upon food. Yup, actual food. Some cans written in a European language, probably French, that I could not understand, but the pictures weren't lying. There was meat in there. Next to the cans was a bottle of wine, whose label faded away over time. It had to be really cold in there for the wine to turn into ice. I took everything I could into my cold, shaking hands, and I went outside, walking up to the nearest street lamp to heat myself up. The cans were still cold and couldn't be opened without tools, and I wasn't even thinking about the wine bottle. Then it struck me. You're a goddamn genius, I thought to myself. I took the cans and raised them as high as I could to the light bulb. I kid you not, the thing heated in seconds. And I was able to open the cans to reveal beef and beans. The food was good. It reminded me of a childhood dinner I used to have. Almost withered the way in a long lost memory. The wine heated up pretty well too. It was old and definitely not a good year. But the myth was true. Alcohol heats a man up and I quickly made my way down the road looking for another home, another can of beef and beans, and another bottle of wine. It sure is easy to lose track of time when you're stuck in randomly segmented rooms, but it's even worse when there's nothing but a black, starless, spotless sky. I've been around this mountain village for at least a solid month, always on the brink of hyperthermia and constantly looking for new houses to pillage. This level of the back rooms doesn't have this effect that drives you insane when you stay too long in it. But the incredibly heavy feeling of loneliness here is everything that you need to turn the happiest man on earth into a body hanging down a rope. I've been in here for so long that it almost feels like home, and home doesn't change. During all this time I've been here, I have had to get more creative to make my life easier. First of all, I found a big piece of wood in the form of a square that was left on the side of the road. After tying it up with rope, it became a way to transport more stuff around without having my arms freeze full of frozen things. I'd say about a third of the houses have stuff in them. Furniture, clothes, tools, food and wine. And I've been to more than a hundred. I've even found a fireplace, but no matches. I found books, but in a language I can't read. So instead, I ripped out the pages and on the back, I drew a map with some coal I found. But in the end, it wasn't much of a use since I didn't have a home to come back to. But today, I found it. A house of something more. Something that I thought I would never see again. Something that I could trust. Something that could bring me back as much love as I could give back to it. A bed. Tonight, I will be sleeping in a bed. A real one, with heavy sheets and blankets. When I slipped in for the first time, I felt so warm and I literally broke into tears. I never thought I could experience such a wonderful sensation again. I wanted to dive into the sheets and never come out of here again. Like the hug a small child gives to his mother before his very first day of school. The kind of moment you wish would never stop. For the first time since I arrived here, I felt warm. I felt loved. I felt home. And it was good. I thought I was alone. I've been in a mountain village for quite a while now. Even if it was hard before, I stopped counting what I thought were days when it became apparent that, well, it didn't serve any purpose. Could have been months, could have been years, who knows. Each time I went out in search of food, it took longer to get to a house I didn't already visit. The house with the bed that I settled in was located in some sort of dense area, with more houses around than usual. A full hour of walking was not necessary to find food and no sweet bottles of wine. The more I ventured from my house, the more I noticed broken street lamps. They made a wall of freezing air that I quickly had to run past to get to the next street lamp. It became much more of a problem when I began stumbling into dead ends, wasting two hours of walking for nothing. The other day, I noticed that a street lamp outside my house was, well, not working. And I could have sworn that this one was working when I left earlier. Then one day, I saw it. I was looking at a window, looking outside and focusing my vision on a single snowflake and following it until it touched the ground. But it never did, because the level of snow never changed here, and I couldn't figure out how that was possible. As I was trying to make sense of something that didn't make sense, it appeared from nowhere, in the middle of the street, a humanoid shadow just standing there. Then it turned around. I could see some sort of blue cracks running down its face, a deep blue that was glowing and contrasting with the perfect black skin its body was covered with. 
along with fur-like branches pointing from the top of its head. I knew that although this thing, or should I say, this entity had no eyes, it was looking at me. Then it disappeared, and at that same moment, all street lamps down the road turned off. Quickly, frost began to consume everything in sight. The windows, the doors, the walls, growing faster and faster until I couldn't see anything from the outside anymore. I was stuck inside an ice cube, having no option but to stay and wait out the street lamps until they came back on. I took stock of my provisions, and I only had five days of food and water. Hungry, cold, thirsty, hungry, cold, thirsty, hungry, cold, thirsty. This stream of feelings was the only thing that occupied my brain for the last 48 hours. I went through all of my provisions in just two days. I wasn't even moving anymore. I couldn't find the strength or the will to do so. I was lying down, facing the ground, trying to keep my internal heat as much as I could. But even with those heavy winter coats I found during my countless burglars, this wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. I was going to die here. This level was most certainly a dead end. I had survived many levels. Levels that meant the end of the road for many, many people. Skills had nothing to do here. You weren't going to survive because of your ability to pathfind your way inside never ending corridors or knowing how to avoid entities. You were at the mercy of the level itself. I have come to terms with my death, but if I'm going to die, I'll die on my own terms. It took all of my will to stand on my shaking legs. I couldn't feel my hands anymore, or even move my fingers. The door was just in front of me, the only thing that separated me from the cold air. All I could do was hope, hope that the cold would freeze my pain receptors, offering me the last gift this level could ever give me, a painless death. Here goes nothing, I said. I kicked the door, but it was frozen shut. So I kicked again, and again, and again. I couldn't feel my legs anymore, but I kept kicking, for what seemed to me like an eternity. My boot was leaking blood and I couldn't kick anymore. I couldn't even cry. I kicked one last time and the door opened. I expected to feel the freezing temperature outside, but instead I felt heat, warmth. The light pierced my eyes like a blade. Fancy colors, golden yellow, green, red, plants, ceiling lamps, doors, and even people. That's when I passed out. I woke up in level 5, the people took care of me and tried to fix my leg or whatever was left of it. After I told them my story, they, they emitted a hypothesis that I had stumbled upon a secret level and I was extremely lucky to have survived. They gave me a mirror and told me to look at my face. I had been severely wounded from my journey in a mountain village. My skin was pitch black because of the horribly cold temperature I had to spend in. But that was nothing compared to the veins that crossed all over my face. Veins that lacked oxygen and turned into a deep blue, almost looking like blue cracks on my face, just like the entities I had faced in that cold, dark, alpine mountain village.